Hey everybody, I'm John Paul Kermy. Welcome to my channel. Today's video, nasal breathing versus mouth breathing. This is a great topic. Uh, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe, like, follow, comment, all that stuff. I wanna hear back from you. Tell me what videos you wanna see um, so I can keep making them. Anyways, let's dive into this. Nasal breathing versus mouth breathing. This is a great topic because in my class, in my main class, I teach this technique, circular breath work, conscious connected breathing, it's also called, where we breathe through the mouth. It's two breaths in, one breath out, in and out through the mouth. And I've had people email me and ask me like, wait, um, I thought you were supposed to breathe through the nose. Breathing through the nose is the best way to breathe. Why are we breathing through the mouth? Yes, breathing through the nose is the best way to breathe 99% of the time. A little bit of mouth breathing, a little bit of conscious connected mouth breathing intentionally for a specific purpose is totally worth it and okay, right? A little bit of mouth breathing to clear out your stress, your trauma, your grief, your generational trauma, to clear all that stuff out of you, totally worth it. It also makes you conscious of your breathing. Am I breathing through the nose, breathing through the mouth? A lot of people have no idea which one they're doing. They're totally unconscious with their breathing. I think uh, it's expanded in this way that, you know, James Nestor wrote this great book called Breathe, The New Science of a Lost Art. It's a great book. And a lot of people read that. And he did this experiment in there where he blocked his nose for, I think it was like a month, and was just breathing through his mouth and his health just went downhill. His health was horrible from just breathing through the mouth. And so everybody who reads that book freaks out about breathing through the mouth. What they miss in that book is that he actually found breathwork, discovered breathwork from doing a, a transformational breathwork class like mine where you're breathing through the mouth and had this big experience and was like, what's all this breathwork stuff about? So he even says, I've seen him say it in some interviews where he's saying, I'm not saying never breathe through the mouth. Breathing through the mouth has its purpose. It's necessary for certain things when you exercise intensely. Also, this type of breathwork technique that I teach, it's necessary for. So he's not, he says, I never said don't ever breathe through the mouth. What I'm saying is chronic mouth breathing is bad for you. Breathing through the mouth you know, throughout the day or while you're sleeping, right? Sleep apnea, you're breathing through the mouth. My wife has a little bit of sleep apnea where she snores, and you know, she's exhausted in the morning, but she started mouth taping after I read James Nestor's book. Thank you, James Nestor. After I read James Nestor's book, she started mouth taping and it was a game changer for her. And she woke up way more rested. So if you have sleep apnea, if you snore, try mouth taping. You know, there's all this mouth tape you can buy on Amazon, but we just use scotch tape now. So anyways, um, back to the mouth breathing versus nose breathing. Um, so intentional mouth breathing is very amazing, very purposeful. You wanna do it with an intention of doing it on purpose for a reason. I have a theory now, because some people will say to me, well, I'm breathing through my mouth when I'm intensely exercising sometimes, and I don't have the same experience that I have in your class. Why is that? Here we go. I have a theory, and I'm the only person I've ever heard say this, so if, it's, if I start hearing all these breathwork teachers saying this after me, you know that they copied this, which happens all the time. I'll say something and then other breathwork teachers will just regurgitate it. And I feel like they're not really speaking from their own experience. Um, there's a, there's a, a, a new generation of people who will watch a video and then literally just make a video from the video they just watched, just copying it. And that's copying. That's not speaking from your experience. Experience is really valuable. Copying and your opinion is not that valuable to me, right? You can never be the best version of you when you're copying other people. So just remember that. That's actually an Eric Thomas quote, right? So give credit where credit is due. Eric Thomas says, you can never be the best copycat out there when you're copying other people or something like that. I'm butchering his quote, but I'll, I'll put it in the, in the below. Eric Thomas is one of my favorite speakers. So if you're gonna copy someone else, if you're gonna use their quote, give them credit. That's what you're supposed to do, in my opinion. I think it's really important to give people credit for their hard work, not just copy them and not give them credit. Anyways, I went on a tangent there. So let's get back to my theory, which I, I think is really cool. So I've been doing this breath work for over, um, I think 11, 12 years now. And I've, I've just, I've guided, you know, thousands of one-on-one -on -one sessions, thousands and thousands of people in classes. And I have this theory. So why do I have this big experience when I'm breathing through the mouth, when I'm doing your breath work? Because you're laying down and you're setting this intention to clear out your stress, to clear out your trauma. 
And I believe that the trauma is stored in the sympathetic nervous system, right? When we breathe through the nose, that's rest or digest, right? That's the parasympathetic nervous system. Breathing through the mouth is the sympathetic nervous system. And I believe that that's where our trauma is stored in our sympathetic nervous system. And so when we're breathing through the mouth, laying down relaxed, we're breathing into that sympathetic nervous system and we're accessing that trauma or accessing that, that stress, that anxiety, that depression, that grief. It's all down there in our sympathetic nervous system. And so I believe when we lay down, we're not using that oxygen for the muscles. Like people will breathe through their mouth when they're intensely exercising, when they're boxing or doing some kind of intense exercise and they're taking that in and the, the oxygen's going to the muscles. But when you're laying down, you, the, the muscles don't need that oxygen. You go into the sympathetic nervous system directly and I believe that you're accessing all that stuff, all that trauma. And I, I'm the only person I've ever heard say this. I've never heard any other breathwork teacher, anybody out there uh, say this before. I haven't read it in any of the books out there that talk about trauma. So I hope that science, there's someone great out there that can prove this one day that I'm correct on this theory. It's a theory, it hasn't been proven yet. But, you know, science is always expanding all the time. So hopefully someone does this study and finds out, yes, the trauma is stored in the sympathetic nervous system. And when we breathe in this way through the mouth, doing circular breathing or conscious connected breathing, we access that stuff and we help clear it out. The most common statement in my classes is, oh my God, that felt like 20 years of therapy without saying a word. Well, I don't think, you know, when I go to therapy, I don't feel as good as I do from breath work. Why is that? Because in breath work, I feel like I actually accessed the, the, the stuff and, and I released it. And when I go to, you know, uh, when I've gone to therapy in the past and I talk about something, I don't feel like I'm releasing it by talking about it. Sometimes I actually further the kind of the, the link to it, the neural, the neural link to that problem, to that issue, just talking about it almost makes it worse or not makes it worse, but just makes me more aware. Okay, now I'm aware that I have this issue or I have this thing that I do, but what am I gonna do about it? Whereas I feel like breath work helps me release that issue, release that trauma, and also be more loving, be more forgiving to myself. So let me, let me know your thoughts on this. This is a pretty wild video, pretty wild topic. I'd love to know your, hear your thoughts in the comments, what you think, what your experience is. Have you released some of your traumas? Do you think I'm right on my theory? Do you think I'm wrong? I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear back from you. Subscribe, like, follow, all that stuff. Hope you enjoyed the video.